Last time on the Every Corner Tour we visited Colmarberg, Schieren, Etzelbrück, Erpeldange sur Sur, Dikirsch, Buchschei, and Feulen. And now the journey continues with episode 2 of the Every Corner Tour. Big folks, how are we doing? We're cold and hot at the same time. It's really difficult to explain. Yes, not all mornings are easy ones, are they? But it's time to get going. A new commune is waiting for us. Esch sur Sur is a picturesque northern commune with much to offer in terms of both leisure, nature, and history. It's not surprising that it's among the more popular holiday destinations in the country. So we've now arrived at Zebes here in Esch sur Sur. Yeah, Zebes produces the tap water for the entire country out of the Sur River and it flows to everyone's home. Do you have Zebes water at your home in Hesperange, Charles? Yes, of course I do because, you know, drink water. So we are now on the dam. On that side of the dam, there's the fresh water supply. And as we walk on further towards the village, we stop at the old local cloth factory, now a museum. Cloth manufacturing was an important part of the local economy in esch sur sur for many years. Today, the old Durfumse factory, which shut its doors in 1975, houses an interactive exhibition on the process. See all the seven stages that all goes through. We learned a lot about the history, what the people did, how their economy worked. On the first floor, there's also a chance to learn about the nature and ecosystem of the region. So we are now in Eschersur, a lovely little bit cute town, very German-like town. <laughs> And what no doubt gives Esch sur Sur its extra charm and character are the medieval castle ruins and the town's heights. A unique sight with splendid views. Okay, so only the third day in and we've already encountered our first major problem. My backpack has basically just snapped. Oh, it basically just gave way. Adapt, improvise, overcome. Yes, Charles, wise words. We'll return to Esch sur Sur later tonight. But for now, after a lunch by the lake, we head to another commune. We will have a lot of fun there because we will see a few fun towns on the way. Rambourg covers a very large area and is home to many smaller villages and extensive forested areas. It also shares a long border with Belgium. Let's see what Rambourg can offer. And if there's one thing that Rambourg offers plenty of, it's nature. So we're taking a walk through the forest. Look at all those tickets! And of course, we know exactly where we're going. We have no clue. We are lost. The path is made of... Slate. And in Rambourg, they produced slate in the past and they have a museum. But unfortunately, today, the museum is closed. And now that we've made our way out of the woods, it's time to move on. Bouled is the westernmost commune in the country. Another rural one, with small villages and plenty of nature. The village of Bouled is certainly a charming one, and someone seems excited about it. Bouled! <laughs> And after visiting the village, we're off to the Hofel's viewpoint atop a hill a short walk away. Bullet. Yes, Charles, I think we've understood now. Hofel's allows you to get an impressive view of the Sur Valley. It's also here that you'll find a collection of German anti-tank guns dating from World War II. But it seems Bouled also brings its lot of surprises, and not the good kind. We did not expect buses to stop going after 7, so we're kind of stuck here. And how do you make the most out of being stuck somewhere? Eating, of course. So here we have a traditional Luxembourgish dish. What is it called? Feierstein salad. Feierstein salad. So it's a meat salad, cooked slowly, egg, pickles, mustard. It's pretty good, I would say. And despite how lovely this commune may be, we've really got to find a way back now. Thank you. 
We are on day four. We are walking across the bridge on our way to the commune of Lac de la Hauteur. This here is the beast itself, Lac de la Hauteur. Yes. Lac de la Hauteur is both the name of this large but sparsely populated commune and of the reservoir on the Sur River that it borders. And so we take a nice morning walk in the commune's forest. Very calm. I am thinking about my thoughts, relaxing, recentering myself. And now that we've recentered ourselves, we can get going to our next commune. Viltz is the self-proclaimed capital of the Ardennes. Here, in the midst of hills and valleys, you'll find a modern city with very rich history. And our visit here starts with the Viltz Castle, a Renaissance-style fortress historically home to the Counts of Viltz, one of the oldest families in the country. Are you trying to get a prince? Yeah, she could do it, so let me try. Inside the castle, you'll find the National Brewery Museum, whose exhibition gives a very complete insight into the process of beer making. The castle even has its own microbrewery, and the tour of the museum can be completed with a tasting. A non-filtered blonde beer. See, si. there's a classic Simon Pils, Brasserie Simon. The castle also houses another museum retracing the World War II history of the city, with a focus on the crucial Battle of the Bulge. We're now walking here in the forest of Viltz, because we thought we were going to the park, but we're now in the forest. Our next site in Viltz is the National Strike Monument, commemorating the general strike movement of 1942, and the several Luxembourgers executed by the occupiers during this period. The monument was created by the famous sculptor Lucien Vercollier. There's a beautiful view up there, we can see it. That's usually what you do with a view anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and that concludes our visit to Viltz, on to the next commune. Kishbelt is another tranquil commune with many picturesque villages and well-preserved nature. Kishbelt, we are in Encherange, which is probably the most interesting out of the villages in this commune. And we make our way to the Rakis Millen, a 14th century water mill, now tourist centre, home to a very special site. We are at the Zonnekris, the Sun Circle geographical point. And so this is a coordinate confluence point. It's the only place in the whole of the country where the latitude and longitude lines cross. Our tour of Encherange is completed by a visit to the little church overlooking the village, a visit which will seemingly last Charles a little while longer since he's lost his mask in there. While we're waiting for Charles to find his mask, we've decided to come out of the church because then we're used to being there. It's been one hour and Charles still has not answered. He is still stuck in there. We should go investigate. It's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. After one hour of staying in there, he has <laughs> finally found his mask. And with that matter finally settled, it's time for us to set off for our final stop of the day. Gustorf, also located among the hills and valleys of the Ardennes, is a rural commune with many nice walking paths to offer. Another northern commune with a nice little village feel to it.
We are on our way to the Antimony Mine, one of the remarkable things about Gustav. Yes, the Antimony Mine of Gustav was active intermittently for almost 600 years before it was shut down in the 1930s. Over 100,000 tons of ore were produced, and this industrial past is still reflected in the thematic trails here. Today, it's mostly farming you'll see here. And with our walk around Gustav concluded, we make our way back to the hostel for the night. After four days, we've already visited 14 communes, and many more are waiting. So until next time, stay safe, and don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss the next episode.